your breath the black birds fall. If the stars were made to worship so loud, I can see your heart in everything you play. Every burning star is in the fire of But 
but measure good amount to your desire. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What can we say about this beautiful love that you offered so willingly on a tree on Mount Calvary? Thank you. Thank you that you looked ahead, that you saw each one of us, Lord, and you were willing to take our place. Thank you so much. We give you glory, Lord. Your goodness is running out 
it is to be alive in this time in this era all praise and glory and honor belongs to God let us pray together father we give glory and praise and thanks to your holy name thank you for your word that is yea and amen and thank you for your word that comes to us I praise you and I honor you speak unto us today in the name of Jesus I pray amen so we're in lockdown and it's been a long time for some of us. We've been in lockdown since March and here we are in August still under lockdown. It seems like a long time for most of us and it seems like a long time for um, us who's been busy and, and we're used to doing things. Our hands are basically cut off and we can't do the things that we used to do. I know some of us, especially the guys, likes to do fishing and we are <laughs> a little bit uh, restricted there when it comes to fishing. Um, especially when we travel to other provinces that we cannot do anymore. Some of us like the bush, like I know uh, one of my close friends that likes to go, go, he likes to go to the bush. And you know, we all have different things, but now our freedom has been taken away and it doesn't put us in a nice position. And I know I don't like this lockdown because it restricted me a lot. And you know what? It is not an easy thing. It's not a nice thing for us to be in. And besides lockdown, we've heard a lot of things going on in our world. We have woman and child abuse. 
We hear of people being raped. We hear of house break-ins. We hear of car hijacking. We hear of robberies. So many things going on in our world. It doesn't put a nice taste in one's mouth. You know, for some of us, we get sick when we think of these things. To crown it all, the church also has a lot of issues and things that it's going through in these days. We have church problems. We have problems with people within the church. And it's not in our church, let me tell you that. But we look around us and we see that people has got problems in their churches. They have problems in their churches. I also see men of God giving up. I see people walking away from the faith. I see some of, some of the Christians give up their faith and they believe in God. <clears throat> some of them say God does not exist anymore. Because they can't hear from him. Especially during lockdown. There are some of us as church leaders who must, list, must lead God's people. We teach them wrong um, principles. Principles contrary to the word of God. I look at all these things going on in our world. And it puts and it makes me sad to see what is going on? I hear of people getting murdered. It breaks my heart to see that we as humanity has become cold towards God's creation. Our love for people has cooled down. It breaks my heart to see that people can take another person's life. The respect for life is no there, not there anymore. It breaks my heart to see these things. And as God's child, and as Christians, what do we do? What do we say about what's going on? It must break God's heart to see what's going on with his creation in today's life. If I feel this bad about it, what about God's heart? And yes, God loves us all. He loves each and every one of us. When we go to the word of God, we see what happens or what's going to happen to our world that we are living in. The first church and the person who wrote this book that I'm going to read from this morning was part of the first church, the first century church, can we put it that way? Heavy persecution, Christians were hunted down. They had church problems. Heresies were going on, was going on in the church. False prophets came up teaching people wrong doctrines. And you're on his way to Patmos. God speaks to John. And he speaks to John to a vision. And he speaks to John about the end times that is ahead of, that, that is coming. And as we know, dear brothers and sisters, it looks like it's very, very close at this time. But even if it's close, even if it's tomorrow, I want us to read today's word and, and really think about it, of what's going to happen to us as humanity. So God, John got this vision from God. It's about the end times. In the opening books, God speaks to jo uh, uh, John. Um, he says, speak to the church of Sardis, Laodicea. And, and, and John speaks, and, and the Lord speaks to John, to these churches. And here in chapter 20, after Christ came back to the earth, came to fetch his people, he writes the following. 
when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to go and to gather them for battle. In number they were like the sand of the seashore. Let us stop there a little bit. In the previous chapter, Satan was bound for 1,000 years. And now in verse chapter 20, he writes and he says it, Satan will be released from prison. But look what's going to happen to Satan. Verse 9, he said, They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Mm. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. You see, there's going to come an end to this evil and the things of this world. That is what's going to happen to Satan and his shenanigans. To Satan and his people. They will be thrown into a lake of fire. Sulfur, the word of God says. And the vision carries on. In verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne. And him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence. And there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the dead and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them and each person was judged according to what they had done then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire the lake of fire is the second death anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire so you see this is what's going to happen at the end of life as I said earlier on, there's going to come an end to evil. There's going to come an end to all these things that's happening on this earth. The other thing we also read about is the fact that there was a book of life that was opened. And if, you're, if the names were not in the book of life, they were thrown into the lake of fire. The same lake of fire where Satan went. Now you see, God is warning and he's telling John, this is what's going to happen to those who does not follow me. It is obvious this morning that those who follow God will go to heaven. But there's one thing that is also for sure is the fact that those who doesn't obey God's laws will be thrown into the lake of fire. It is a reality that there is a hell. And I know people don't want to talk about this subject, but my brothers and sisters, as sure as there is heaven, there is a hell. And the word tells us this morning, if your, 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 your name is not written in the book of life, there's eternal condemnation. Because it says that that fire is going to be there forever and ever and ever. It will be an everlasting fire where those go to. Yes, we will be judged according to our works that we've done according to the things that we've done on this earth. But we serve a gracious God and a merciful God. And we can see this God, what he is like, 
when we read the book of Isaiah. Now the book of Isaiah we know is written by, is, is, is about a prophet of God. A man that was chosen by God to tell the people what God requires from them and how they should walk. The book of Isaiah also speaks about the salvation that, is, that God is bringing to all humanity. You see, God is not just a God that practices wrath, but He also practices grace and salvation. In the book of Isaiah, the final chapter of Isaiah, the Lord speaks and He says this, in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23 to 24, all humanity will come to worship me from week to week and from month to month. And as they go out, they will see the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. For the worms that devour them will never die and the fire that burns them will never go out. You see a prophecy and, and a prophet which God spoke through many years ago before John got his revelation. It speaks and it says those who rebelled against God will be burning and will be <clears throat> thrown into the lake of fire. And the fire that burns will never go out. You see that is the faith of evil and those who rebel against God. But God is a gracious God. He says in the other books of Isaiah that he's sending a Messiah to die for the sins of the people. In Isaiah chapter 53, this, this is a chapter before chapter 66 and it reads as follows. Isaiah 53 verses 1 Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or common lines and when we see him there is no beauty and we should desire him that we should desire him excuse me. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from it, from him. He was despised and we did not esteem. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone on his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, a prophecy done by Isaiah about the coming Messiah to the world and, his, and, and what his coming, he was coming to do. All the sins of the world was laid upon Jesus Christ. Same book, same prophet, which God spoke through. And remember the last chapter, what it says. It says there, and they, and as they go out, they will see the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The same God was giving us Jesus Christ will come he will come and bring an end to evil he will come back to judge people according to their works last sunday we had such a wonderful message about how who you are praise the lord who you who are you are you a rebellious people a rebellion person or do you follow god to obey his commandments. Do we obey his commandments as his people? And this morning we can clearly see that God is going to come and he's going to judge the world. He's going to judge the people. 
He's going to come back and he's going to bring an end to evil. He's going to come back and he's going to judge people on their works. What are your works like today, our brothers and sisters? Does our works please God? What is our works? Do we obey the Lord? Have we accepted him as Lord and Savior? God is a God of grace. Even though that day is coming and it's burning and we will be judged, today we have a chance to make right. When Jesus was walking the earth, he had a conversation with Nicodemus. He was basically ministering to Nicodemus. John chapter 3 verses 1. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader, religious leader, who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs and evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, and he says the following, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Here Jesus speaks to Nicodemus, and he tells Nicodemus, my friend, you have to be born to see the kingdom of God. To be born again, which it means that you have to stop in the way that you are living. If you are living a way that and a life that doesn't please God, we have to stop. We have to start all over again and start in a new life with Christ. That is what it means to be born again. He says, if you're not born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. If there's not going to come a stop or an end to your godless life, you will have to face the consequences. You will not see the kingdom of God. And you know, as we read through um, John chapter 3, when we come to verse 16, it reads and it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Let's take note of what the word is saying here this morning. It says, God so loved the world. Okay? It is God who loved the world. That means each and every person on this planet and on this earth, God loves. He cares about each and every one of them. Then he carries on. That he gave his only begotten son. You know, even though people were loving in sin, God gave us still Jesus Christ he gave us Jesus Christ so that we can have what whoever believes in him will have eternal life which means we will have life he's not an unfair God this morning verse 17 says Christ didn't come into this world to condemn it but to save it you see our sin leaves us and leads us into death to eternal condemnation but hey we serve a God that is fair there's a God that created us who loves us so much that is very fair unto all people and he says this morning he didn't come to condemn us but to save the world the gospel in Jesus Christ didn't come to write us off but it came to give life to all people you see, God is giving grace, He's giving mercy, and He loves His creation. And it doesn't matter where you are this morning, where you sit, God loves you. God cares about you. Doesn't matter what you've done, He cares about you. And as we carry on reading in the same chapter, in verses 31, this is John speaking, John the Baptist, speaking to his disciples, those who followed him, after they complained about, hey, there's a lot of people following Jesus. This is what John writes, he says, he has come from above and is greater than anyone else. 
referring to Jesus that came from heaven to the earth. We are of the earth and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. He testified about what he has seen and heard, but how we, but how few believe what he tells them. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true, for he is sent by God. He speaks God's word, for God gives him the spirit without limit. The father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. And anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. That is what is going to become of those who does not believe in Jesus Christ. That will happen to them. They will, ex they will not experience eternal life, but they will remain under God's judgment. God is a God that's fair. He's a God of mercy. He didn't send Jesus Christ to condemn us, but to give us eternal life. And there's a warning for all of us today. that If we don't love a life that pleases God, if we disobey him or rebel against him, eternal condemnation awaits us. Is your case right with God? Have you made right with God yet? Today, we have a chance to make right with the Lord. Today, we can come to Him with our arms wide open. He's willing to forgive our sins. My brothers and sisters, let us not take this lightly. But let us think about this one day that is coming. Where God is going to judge each and every person on this earth. He's going to bring an end to the evil. He's going to bring an end to all the things, the suffering that is going on right now at this moment. Our God is coming back and he's going to judge us according to our works. What are your works like? Is your name in the book of life? If not, today we have an opportunity to make right with God. Let us serve God. Come with me on this bandwagon. Come with me, my brothers and sisters, because you see the Lord is coming back. Come accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Come take him into your life and experience life in abundance. We will have eternal life. Those that follow Jesus Christ will have eternal life. Today is a time to repent. Today we're still living in grace. Let us make the wise decision to obey God, to become one of His children, to become part of this wonderful love and a wonderful family that we belong to. May the Lord bless his word today. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for your word that is yea and amen. My prayer this morning, O oh God, is that you will touch those who need you so desperately today. You can see the hearts of many. They are those who are crying out for forgiveness. Forgive us for our sins. They are those of us who are making a commitment and is repenting. We pray, O oh God, that you will forgive us for our sins. We need you, Lord, more and more each day. We pray, O oh God, that you will have your way in us. And during this time, help us to hold on to the faith. Hold on to you, my God. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, church family, please stay tuned for the announcement that is going to come up after the message. And please tune in again <clears throat> on Wednesday evening. When we're going to share the word of God again, 
So until next time, stay safe and stay blessed. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit stay and abide within us until we meet again. Amen. Stay safe and God bless.